Hi there, I believe we're back. Busy speed at the bottom of the helix. Arduinos, what are they? How hard are they to use? How expensive are they? Why should I use them? Do I need a degree in computer science? You'll know all of this in the next 45 minutes. To give you an introduction, please welcome, all the way from Manitoba, Canada, Mr. John Bate. Hello. Um, this won't answer a lot of those questions, actually, because no. there are lots of uh, videos and YouTubes and you know, all sorts of things out there about the Arduinos and the hardware parts of them, but nobody ever talks about the programming. How do you actually create your own thing that works on your own railroad? And uh, well, I spent more than 40 years as a professor in a computer science department at the University of Manitoba teaching people to program. So this is kind of a natural fit for me. So this will focus on mostly the programming aspect of it. Uh, let me just do a very brief introduction into the other aspects of it, uh, but this won't take very long. Uh, so just get in here. Um, why you or how you program an Arduino is this is the Arduino here, you know, this little guy. Hopefully, you can see my cursor on the screen there. Yeah. Uh, and it is a computer, but it has no keyboard, no mouse, no monitor, no network, none of the usual things. It's meant to be an embedded system, it's been meant to live inside something a car, a toaster, or a model railroad. Uh, but you can't program it because it, you can't interact with it as a human. You need a regular computer for that, a laptop, a tablet, something like that. And you program it on a real computer or a normal computer and then just download or actually it's called uploading the program over a normal USB cable into the Arduino to teach it what it's supposed to do. And it's very easy to hook up pretty much any input or any output to an Arduino, lights, uh, signals, switch machines, block detectors, as it says on the side there, pretty much anything that produces or consumes an electrical signal, easy. You just hook it up with a wire. So I'm going to sort of go through these last four steps uh, by showing them to you rather than by talking about them. I won't be using the slides very much in this talk. So the first thing you want to do is download the Arduino app. So you go to a thing called arduino.cc. There's the website there. And you just go over and there's a software thing there. And there's a downloads part of that. And if you go there, I think I must have not clicked on it properly. Oh, there we go. Uh, you can program these things with a web editor just in a web page without actually installing any software on your computer. Uh, I would suggest you do the real thing and go get the actual IDE, it's called Integrated Development Environment. Uh, and you can see it runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, pretty much anything. So you go and do that. You get that thing. Uh, then you want to go and buy yourself an Arduino. So I'm going to go back here. So there's an Arduino. Um, you can buy a brand name one like this. This isn't Arduino branded, but it's a, a branded one. And uh, or you can buy a white unmarked box from China sold by Amazon. Uh, you might have more problems with the latter, but they're much cheaper. Uh, but this was a, an Arduino, and then all you do to hook it up to your computer is here's the Arduino, here's a USB cable. Just plug the USB cable into the Arduino, and you may have to make sure you have the right kind of USB cable. Some of them use a mini cable, which is a little hard to find sometimes. So just plugged it in, and then I'm just going to plug it into my computer, and away we go. That's all there is to it. So don't be afraid of these things. If there's one thing I want you to come away with from this clinic, it's a, you know, gee, I think I can do that. This doesn't look too scary. Uh, so there, my Arduino is now talking to the computer. Uh, and then you just run the program on your computer. And the program is just called Arduino. Uh, it's pretty simple. And the window that you will get if you do that looks something like this. There's the Arduino program running. So this is running on your, your tab tablet, laptop, whatever. And this is how you create a program to stuff into your Arduino there. OK. Uh, and there's one more step, though. And that is you have to tell your program 
which Arduino it is you want to talk to. So there's a tools menu there. It might be rather fine print for you, but there's a tools menu there. And then there's a little section that says board, and you want to tell it which of the many, many kinds of Arduino you have. And you can see the list there. It's a very long one. Um, I suggest for beginners, buy one called a UNO. UNO. They are by far the most common. They're easy to use. They're a nice form factor. Uh, probably get that one. And then underneath, there's a port thing. Now, normally you will only have one choice there, so you make the one choice because you will probably only have one Arduino connected. I happen to have three here, so I want to go in there and I actually want to say I want to talk to the one on port eight or port seven. Oh, let's stick with port seven. I'll talk with that one. And there might be another one that props up there, but that's pretty rare. Okay, and there you go. Uh, I can just put a program in there and program the Arduino. So that's all of the mechanics of setting it up and getting it going. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Uh, so let me show you from now on, we're going to talk about the programming. So there's the program that you will get uh, almost if you just click a file and new in this thing. So if you go up to the file menu and say, give me a new program, well, this is what you will get. You'll get something that looks exactly like that. Um, and what you see there are two things that are called either functions or methods. Uh, there's one there that's called setup. There's one there that's called loop. For now, that void setup and void loop with the two parentheses after them that have nothing inside and the little curly braces that go around there, don't touch. That's the advanced class. Just leave them there. Don't touch them and you won't have any problem. That's what we call magic for the moment. Uh, what the little braces do, I'm going to show you or tell you about four fundamental concepts in computer programming, and here's number one out of four. That's known as a block, and all a block is, is you put a sequence of actions, statements they're called, you commands to do something, and all a block does is it says, Go and do these commands in order, one at a time, exactly as written. That's fundamental number one in computer programming. Pretty simple. You put braces around it. And the question then is, is well, what do you put in here? Uh, what sort of things can you tell it to do? Well, that's the vocabulary, and you do have to learn uh, what sorts of things you can tell it to do. And I'm not going to do the usual thing. I'm going to start off by putting in a command that looks like this. And a lot of them look like this. There's some sort of a name in front. That's the name of some action that the Arduino knows how to do. And that particular one uh, says, hey, there's a USB cable between this Arduino and the computer. Let's talk on that USB cable and, sh and show me things. Uh, so serial.begin is the name of that magical command. And it has to be exactly spelled right. Put a lowercase s on that, it won't work. You know, spell anything wrong, it won't work. Uh, it has to be exactly like that. And then the commands usually have something else after them in the parentheses after them. There's always a pair of parentheses there. Sometimes they don't have anything inside. Sometimes they have a lot. And what's inside is, well, what more do you need to know? So Serial Begin says, talk on that USB cable, please. The 38400 says, well, how fast? It's a, it's a baud rate, it's a speed. And you can put just about any, well, not quite anything in there, but just leave it at 38400, that's a standard one. And at that point, I can do something that says, okay, say something. And notice, nah, I did something wrong there, so it's telling me I did something wrong. Uh, notice that this one lit up and this one didn't. That tells you that you made a spelling error. Oh, I got that E as a capital E. It's all case sensitive. You have to spell it exactly right. Watch to make sure it's colored the way you expect it to be colored, and that will come with experience. And this says, um, tell me about whatever is in those parentheses. Now, you got to remember that this program is running on the Arduino. What that says is send back to the main computer whatever I put in these brackets here, parentheses. And I'm just going to be very friendly and say hello like that. And so when I run this program, it should say hello. Okay, let's, let's, let's run it. So here's how you run a program. There's a complete program. And let me just 
show you how to run it. There's a little arrow here, and if you hover over it, it'll say upload. You click on that little upload thing, and oh, he wants me to save this. This is a generic con. I'll just call it garbage, garbage, garbage. Okay, there we go. And it will take that program. You'll see down there, if you can read the very fine print, it says compiling sketch. And then we'll get a bunch of stuff in the blacks, black below that once it's sorted itself out here. Come on. Now, why it's taking so long to compile this, I have no idea. Hello, am I talking to the right thing? I think I am. Oh, that's very strange. All right. Tell you what, let's just kill that and start and get a new one. Don't mind this, I'm just using that to get a new file here. It's always gremlins that show up in these things. Come on. What the? Oh. Okay, here's a new one. Just make sure it's still talking to the right thing. It should be talking to that one. Let me just unplug the other one so that I'm sure it's talking to the right thing. Okay. Create that again real quick for you. This is a type of program that was first done by a couple of guys called Kernigan and Ritchie in 1970 who developed the C language program. And uh, the first thing they ever ran on, on the language called C was uh, Hello World. So I've abbreviated it Hello, but that's what it. Uh... But you know, we are worldwide today. We are worldwide here, so I should put the world in there, shouldn't I? Holy smokes. Oh, I got a begin instead of a begin. There we go. Let's try that again. For some reason, the gremlins are acting up here. There we go, the green bar went all the way over. That should be it. Okay, um, assuming this is going to start working in about two seconds. Uh, when you, when the Arduino does send something over to the main computer, you need a way to see it. So there's a thing called a serial monitor. Right there, it says serial monitor. So the Arduino is sending some information along this USB cable. It arrives at the main computer. Uh, where does it go? Well, it goes nowhere unless you actually create this thing called a serial monitor. And there it is, there's the hello. Often there'll be a bunch of garbage in front of it the first time. And so there we go, I've programmed my little Arduino uh, to say hello. Well, that's not very exciting, uh, but it'll talk to me. This is really important because when things go wrong and you can see that they do, uh, you need to be able to find out what's going on. So a very handy thing is to have the Arduino tell you what it's doing, because it is a computer. Computers are idiots. They understand nothing. They know nothing. They're just machinery. Fancy electronic machinery, but it's just a machine. So they, if you program them, can tell you, well, I'm doing this. I'm now doing that. I'm now doing this. Uh, 
find out what it's doing. And so this little mechanism of, you know, the serial begin serial print line, that's really important. You know, start with that. Okay, now for the main thing here, and that is you've got these two places to put them. You've got a block here after the magical words void setup. You've got a block here after the magical words void loop. What's the difference? And you put it up in setup, it's done once, just like it says in that little comment there. The, the double slash at the beginning of that first line up here in setup uh, makes it a comment. The computer just ignores it, doesn't do a darn thing. That's there for people to read. And that's very important. You want people to be able to read this, particularly you yourself. Uh, and whatever's in here, it does it once at the beginning just to get everything set up and moving the right way. This other one down here, the block, there's a block there, little semi little curly braces after void loop, that is done over and over again, as fast as it can. So it does that, the stuff that's in that block, right now there's nothing. Uh, and then once it finishes it, it goes back and does it again. And it does it as many times as it possibly can. So let's take that serial print line thing there and get it out of there and put it in here instead. And after being prompted there, Let's actually say hello world, which is the more traditional thing to say anyway. Uh, okay, so let's do that and let's run that. And if you go over to your communication window over here and see what's going on there, and perhaps the problem here is this is a little bit overloaded with all the cameras going on over here. Um, you should close a bunch of things, but that will kind of interrupt proceedings. Come on. Perhaps it doesn't like the fact that it's called HGF, JHGF. That's not a very nice name. Holy smokes, this is going to slow things down if it's going to be that, that slow. I'll have to uh, make more changes. OK, so there it goes. And when it runs that thing, you can see that it's very, very friendly. Uh, it's just going to be saying this as fast as it can, as many times as it can. And it's a little tough to see, particularly on your screen, I think, just, just how often that's showing up because the screen fills almost instantly with that. So let me show you uh, major computer programming concept number two. Uh, after every hello world, let's put a count, let's put a number. So hello world one, hello world two, hello world three, hello world four and have it label the, the different lines. So major concept number two is you can use the computer's memory. This one doesn't have a lot, but it has enough. And so we wanna keep account of where we are. How many times have we done this? And so here's how you say, I wanna use a piece of computer's memory. That's called a variable. All right, so a variable is a thing with a name. You give it a name, any name you want. There are some rules, but they're not uh, really all that important. So I'm going to just call this one count. The second thing is every piece of computer memory, come on, uh, you have to specify, well, what kind of data is this? Because all that's in a computer's memory is a bunch of zeros and ones. It can't tell whether that's a number or a color or a piece of a picture or what the heck it is. It's just zeros and ones. So you have to tell it. So the int thing there is a type. And there are lots of different types, and I'll just show you a few of them here to give you kind of the idea. Uh, there's the reference manual. If you just go into the Arduino program, maybe I'll do that, and there's a help reference. There's under the help, where you would expect to find it, there's a thing called reference, and that'll bring up a whole reference manual for this whole language. Uh, Serial.begin and all that stuff is in here too. Right now though, look at all those types data types in the middle here, all of this stuff. Uh, so where's int? There's int right there. So if you say, oh, no, no, hey, I, I, I need to store, I just need to store a little number, a little integer, a whole number. So as it says here, uh, okay, you want an int? Right, good. That gives you little integers between roughly minus 32,000 and plus 32,000. Okay, that's good. No fractions. If I want fractions, I got to use a different type. Uh, and not very big, but that's okay. I just need little numbers here. 
And there are other different kinds of things for big numbers or for numbers with fractions. And here's a big long list. We'll meet two of them later on, but for now, we just need a little number. So int is the thing to use here. So what that does is it sets up a piece of computer memory with a number in it. Then you can control that number. You can find out what it is. You can set it. You can change it. What I'm going to do is set it to 0 at the start. So this is probably one of the worst mistakes in the design of languages ever made. Uh, if you have a variable name, count here, make sure you spell it right. Spelling counts. And then the equal sign, what it does is it calculates all of the stuff after the equal sign and stores it in that variable. So here, well, there's not much calculating to be done. It's just a zero, uh, but it'll store a zero in count. That does not say count equals zero. That says change count so that it becomes zero. The equal sign means change to this. Poor old John Backus, way back in the 1950s, put an equal sign there, and it's the worst mistake that's ever been made. Uh, it should not, it doesn't mean equals, it means change me to this. And so I'm gonna go down here and print hello world. I'm also going to print the number. And I'm gonna say, okay, print the count as well. And then I want to bump up the count. After I've done it once, I want to say, OK, well, I need one more. So here I say count is assigned count plus one. Um, notice it does not mean equals as an equation. That is nonsense. Count does not equal count plus one. Any you know, buddy in beginning algebra can tell you that. That says change count to this, which is whatever it is now, plus one. Make it one bigger. So the, here's a case of using the assignment, it's called, to bump it up by one. OK, if I take that and wait for it to do its thing, and hopefully it will do it a little faster this time, or maybe not, uh, we should get a very different thing showing up on the screen. So that's fundamental concept number two, variables. You say, I want some data in memory. I'm going to give it this name. This is what kind of data it's going to be. And then you can change it whenever you want. I did that twice here. And you can also use it whenever you want. All you do is give its name and say, I, I want that number here. And you get it. OK, so if it ever actually gets its act together here and compiles that thing, and I've never seen it work this slowly before in all my life, we will get some Hello Worlds with some numbers on it. OK, so at this point, I would normally ask any questions from the class. but. Uh, Perhaps it isn't time for questions yet. Uh, there we go. And uh, that will be uploaded into the thing. And here we go. All right, so we're up to 300, 400, 500, 600. You can see that it's, it's going very fast. We're into the thousands already. Uh, there's that count happening. And you can see how fast that loop is running. And in fact, the serial.print line most of the time is the slowest thing you can possibly do on our in Arduino. The communications take way longer than almost anything else you'll ever do with this thing. Uh, but yeah, there we go. We're up to 5,000 or so already. All right. So there's the, the first demo. Usually, though, when you, you're starting to program Arduinos and things, the first thing they tend to do is hook electronic stuff up, up to it and show you how to do that. So I'm going to switch gears here and give you another demo and show you how to control some things. So I've got a little railroad here. And there's the little railroad. And it's got a couple of signals on it. It's a little interlocking thing with uh, something pretending to be a dwarf signal and two other double-headed signals, which are just a bunch of LEDs. Those LEDs are hooked up to the Arduino. Now, when you have something hooked up to the Arduino, you have to know what pin it's on. So an Arduino has a whole bunch of little pins along the edges. And you just poke wires into the holes or solder it or connect it however you want to connect the things to the Arduino's pins. So uh, this little uh, guy that I've got uh, has 12 things in this little tiny railroad. Uh, there are all these lights. So 
this light over here, the, the westbound signal here. The green light is connected to pin three, the red light's connected to pin four. There's a little dwarf signal with uh, pins six and five for the yellow and the red. Uh, there's another signal over here for eastbound, and that's on pins eight, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, it's got lots of little lights hooked up to it. It also has four block detectors, which just tell you whether a train is there or not. Uh, I use the little uh, NCE BD20s, which were over here, uh, right there, uh, these little guys. Uh, use whatever you want, as long as it gives you a, an electrical signal. And so um, how about 10? I, I'm gonna control the uh, LED that's on pin 10, which is the top red one on the left signal. How do you do that? Okay, so here's how you would do that. Let me move over so we can actually see my little railroad there. And maybe I actually wanna get the locomotive moving a little bit on that. Hopefully that doesn't slow it down at all. Okay, so to get this to happen, first of all, you have to tell it what pin, whoops, pin, uh, not pin, pin mode. Okay, uh, you have to first tell the Arduino uh, program, well, what's connected to what pin? Uh, and so I give it a pin number. I wanna say, okay, look, pin 10, uh, is an output from the Arduino out to the world. And that allows me to connect something to pin 10. And then, okay, so that'll set it up. All of the inputs by default, all of the pins, I should say, by default are inputs because that's electrically safe. Uh, if they're inputs, they're not trying to produce any current and they're not going to have a problem if you hook it up to something else that's trying to also produce current and short circuit something. But I want an output here. Uh, then this main command that you'll use are digital write, digital read, and also analog write and analog read, but uh, we're not gonna use those ones. Uh, so this says, okay, so pin 10, uh, what do you wanna do? And the two choices are high and low, uh, ground and plus five volts, or occasionally 3.3 .3 on some kinds of Arduinos. Uh, so you either say high or low. Now you might think that high will turn the light on and low will turn the light off. It might, but most of the time, uh, lights are hooked up to plus five volts and the pin on the Arduino. So if you put the pin on the Arduino to zero to ground, ah, now you've got an electrical current. If you put it to high, you don't. Uh, you can do it the other way around and, and make low be uh, off and high be on, but I use it this way. So again, spelling counts. It has to be digital right all slurred together like that. And again, there have to be a pair of parentheses there and inside is the details. So to change a pin, you have to say, well, which pin and how do you want to change it? Uh, pin 10, uh, I want it to be low. Okay, let's wait a while and uh, compile that one. And over here on the real railroad right now, uh, it's not showing the way that program is. What should happen is the top red one over here, and oh boy, it's not even showing my finger. There it is. The top red one over there should go on when it finally gets around to running this program uh, because that's the one connected to pin 10. So my, the lag is impressive here. Even the uh, video is jumping all over the place. Something might be trying to update itself or something silly like that. There we go. And when that runs and when the, when the delay is finished, there we go. Oh, the other, the, the red light over here, by the way, that's uh, the one on the right, that's permanently on. That one's uh, not connected to any pins. It's just hardwired, it's a dummy. So there, I turned a light on. Okay, big deal, wasn't that exciting? Um, let's do something uh, a tad more exciting with it and make it flash. So let's just use another command, delay. Uh, delay does just what it says. It says, well, you know, twiddle your thumbs and stop and don't do anything for a while. And the information that this one needs is how long, and it's in milliseconds. So 500 means half a second, 500 thousandths of a second. And once we've done that, and I'm gonna make good use of copy paste here, 
uh, we'll just say, okay, that's good. Now turn the light off and wait another half a second. I'm just going to take this up a little bit and that'll be a flashing light. So what I've told it to do is turn the light on, wait a half a second, turn the light off, wait a half a second. And when it's done that, it's finished the block. So what does it do? It's in the loop section, goes back up, does the whole block again, turn the light on again. Wait another half a second, turn the light off again. Wait another half a second, and uh, we'll get a flashing light. And again, there will be a little bit of a delay as that happens. So maybe I'll sort of start talking about other things while it's sorting itself out to do that. So we can have a flashing light. Um, what I'm also going to do is get two lights to flash. So I'm going to make a crossing signal out of this. It's going to look a little funny because I'm using signals to do it, but uh, let's do that. So there's the code was finished actually compiling and we should get a flashing light. There we go. Well, we got a flashing light. Well, I do anyway. On your video, you can, yeah, it's flashing a little irregularly for you because of all of the lag, but you can see we've got a flashing light there. Uh, I'm going to just change and control a red light on the other side. And I'll just it make make it do the opposite of whatever the other guy's doing. So uh, I'm going to say uh, turn the first one on, turn ten on, and turn five off. Wait a half a second. Now do the opposite. Turn ten off and turn top five on. Wait a half a second. Do that, and I'll get alternately flashing lights eventually when the thing compiles, and we'll see that. Um, but let's make a crossing signal out of it. I'm going to say now no no. I want the lights to flash when the train goes through here, and otherwise not. So if we go back to our little cheat sheet here, the little blue circles are the block detectors. Okay, let's suppose block A2 is where the crossing signal should be. And so I wanna say, okay, look, when there's a train in A2, in the, the block detector connected to pin A2 of the Arduino, the A stands for analog, but we're not using it for that right now. Uh, then make the lights flash, otherwise don't. How would you do that? Okay, we're up to three out of four. Uh, let's hide that one away for a second. And I'm also gonna kill the COM7, I don't need that. Uh, how would you say, okay, look, do all that, but only when there's a train there. So here's the next concept, an if, oops. If you say if, and create a little block, and for readability, it's very important to, there's something inside a block, indent it. So there I've created another little block. So notice I've got two blocks, one inside the other. There's the big block around the whole loop thing here. Well, here's another littler block inside that. And the if in front of it says, okay, well, check the things inside the parentheses there. It'll be something that'll be true or false, yes or no. If it's true, yes, do that block. If not, don't do it. So simply, if this is true, do that. Otherwise, don't do it. So what we wanna put in there is something that said, if there's a train there. So I will do a digital read. And I'll say, okay, well, look, and there's some parameters in there. And the parameters in this case are, well, where do you want to look? Uh, A2, all right. That's the, the, that's the turnout. So I'm using as, a, as, the, uh, as the place where the level crossing is. And I want to say here, if that is, now, if the train is there, you get a low. Again, the little block detectors, low means there's something there. High means there's nothing there. So I'm gonna say, if that is equal to low. And notice, I just say, if this, you know, check a pin A2, digital read means go, go get what's on that pin. Tell me what it is, high or low. If that is equal to low, well, the equal sign, I can't use an equal sign there because that means change me to, right? Because that was, John Back as a 1950 doomed us to using the equals for change me to. I don't want to say change me to. I want to say, is it actually equal? Yes or no? Well, now we have to use a double equal to sign for that. If I could go and smack John Backus upside the head, I would do it. So this one of the greatest causes of bugs for students in history right there. Uh, when you're checking to see if something is equal to something else, it's a double equal to sign like that. 
So that says, there's a train there? Great, do all this, make the light flash. If not, don't. Let's run that. And hopefully you can see on the, uh, all right. I don't see the second light flashing on the railroad right now. Well, let's just wait and see what happens when this is in there. Hopefully I don't have a bug in there, but while I'm doing it, um, very shortly I will be telling you about this, so I'll do it now to save time. Um, rule one as a programmer, I, I tell all my classes that for years and years and years, there's rule one when you're a programmer, and rule one is very simple. It's your fault. Whatever happens, you did it, the programmer. You, the programmer, are the one who did it. It's not, you, you can't go and say, hey, you know, I programmed this to do this thing, and it's doing something else. What is the stupid thing doing? No, it's what did you do to cause it to do that? Uh, it is always your fault. Okay. And I think I must have a bad connection or something, because pin 5 is not lighting up as it should. Did you set it as an output in setup? <laughs> Thanks. See, it's my fault. Uh, right there. There you go. Um, it's my fault. Thank you. You shall have extra term marks. Thank you. There we go. Okay, there was the bug in that one. Now we got pin 10 and 5. Now, uh, I could declare A2 as an input as well, but uh, that's the default anyway. But I suppose just to be a good corporate citizen, I should say pin mode A2 input. And there is another thing you can do, which is input pull-up. If you know what a pull-up resistor is, if your electronics is up to knowing what that is, uh, you can use that to get one uh that is supplied by the arduino if you don't know what a pull-up resistor is um the electronics class is down the hall i'm not going to talk about that just at the moment uh so there we go let's just upload that one so yeah so one of the hardest things that anybody finds me included with computer programming is debugging it when something goes wrong and primarily the problem is a psychological one not a physical one it's a case of you have to say okay, what did I do to cause this? You know, what did the stupid idiot who wrote this program, which is me, do that makes this happen? And so you, you have to adopt that very uh, self-critical thing to, to debug a program. That's the biggest thing that people have, even with using computers, you know, why is the computer doing this? Well, probably because you told it to. Um, that's the problem. All right, so let's just run that train around a little faster. You might, until it gets there. Okay, so the train will be coming around. While it's in here, there we go. Okay, my lights are flashing. Hopefully you can see that back and forth, back and forth. Very laggy on your screen, but you can see two lights are going off and on and off and on. And let's just run the train out of the thing and there it's out of it come on there we go wait till your screen catches up and wait a minute the light on the right stayed on i don't want it to be on there's no train there what's wrong well what's wrong is okay rule one it's your fault i did that well what did i do and i'm going to since this is going fairly slowly because of our lag problems here well, what I did is say, is there a train there? Yeah, okay, turn the left light on, then wait a while, and then turn the right light on. And is the train still there? Okay, do it again. But when it finishes doing it, well, what's the last thing I did is turn the right-hand light on. I never said to turn it off. Uh, I never said, you know, well, okay, when the train isn't there anymore, turn the darn thing off. I never said that. Okay, well, it's my fault. So let me introduce you to concept three part two, which is else. So if you, after an if, put else, and then a little brace in there, and I've got, oh, it's provided an extra brace for me. Get out of there. Um, what will happen in this block is 
uh, if the thing in the if is not true, if this is not true, it'll do the else part. If it's true, it'll do the first part after, right after the if. If it's not true, well, then we'll go down here and do this. So what I want to do down there is to say, well, just make sure both lights are off, will you? Uh, just make sure they're both off. And that'll solve that problem. When the train's not there, we'll turn the lights off uh, there. Okay, and this will be the, the final thing. And let's just move the train back there a little bit. Okay. When it finishes putting this in. Okay, so that's three out of four concepts. One, a block is just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this in order. That's it. Concept number uh, two is variable. You can have a variable that holds a piece of data if you want. It has a type and you can change it and you can use it. Concept number three, you can control whether it does something or whether it does not do something, uh, the if. And that's three quarters of what you need to do almost anything. There's one more left, and I will short circuit it by showing you the final result on this one. Um, and you can see in the little video of my thing there, it's lights are flashing, the crossing lights are going. Okay, let's take the train out of there. It'll be a bit of a delay for you. But the train is out of there and the lights are both off for me. And as soon as your video catches up to mine, oh good, the lights are both off now. That, that one little red one there is just the dummy. It's always on. It's a dummy signal light. Okay, so there's two out of three. Well, I want to do one more thing, and there's no time to do it in detail. So let's make a speedometer, okay? Let, let's do something to time how fast the locomotive is going in miles an hour. And you can buy boxes that'll do this for 100 bucks or something. Uh, I can do it for zero by just programming it. If I have, you know, a railroad with a block detector or two in it uh, and an Arduino, um, away I go. So let me show you this one. Um, let me go straight to the one that works. Okay, so what you might want to do is, well, think about uh, how you would do it. I happen to know that between one set of gaps in the rails and the next set of gaps in the rails surrounding my uh, turnout there, it's 9.44 inches. Well, suppose you were a real person standing beside a real railroad line and you had a couple of telephone poles, say, and they were 132 feet apart or something. Uh, well, how would you check the speed of the locomotive or the train? You would say, well, wait for it to get to the first telephone pole. Start a stopwatch. Wait until it gets to the second telephone pole. Stop the stopwatch. See how much time there it is. Uh, do the math, and that tells you the speed. You know, write down the speed in a notebook or something. Okay, well, do it exactly the same way in a computer program. So here's a computer program that will do that. And just to save time, I'm gonna upload that while I'm talking here. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to say, I need it to tell me the speed when it's done. So I'm, not, I'm gonna need it to talk to me. So I will do that one, which is a standard. So step one, and notice I've put little comments in here to say what these steps are doing. Step one, two, three, four, five. So step one, wait for the train to get there. And I'm assuming an eastbound train. So here's concept number four. It looks exactly the same as an if, but it's got the word while in front of it instead of the word if in front of it. Everything else you've seen. So this says, if this thing inside here is true, do this, but then go back and do the whole thing again. Check it a second time. If it's still true, do it again. Go back and check it a third time. If it's still true, do it again. So this doesn't say when to do the block. This says when to keep doing the block forever, as long as you can. So as long as there is no train there, sit and twiddle your thumbs for a millisecond or so, and then go back and check it again. So this is going to check that uh, for the presence of a train a thousand times a second. It's going to be you know, quite accurate in figuring out when the train is there. Uh, that's concept number four. 
if you can have it do something over and over and over again, with those four concepts, you can do anything, theoretically. That was proven a long, long, long time ago, mathematically. If you've got a variable, an if, a while, and a block, everything is possible. You still need a lot of vocabulary, uh, but that reference will give you the vocabulary. So this says, we'll wait for the train to get there. OK, now, get the time. OK, so I'm going to use a variable. I have to, I have to write down in my notebook, OK, when did it arrive at the first telephone pole? It was you know, 9.53. Well, how do you do that? Oh, there's always some vocabulary for that. Uh, millis here is something called a function. It's something that will tell you how many milliseconds has it been since this Arduino was powered up in the first place? It's a sort of a, a big clock that's inside the Arduino. And that will give you uh, a start time. Now, it's in milliseconds. It can't be one of those integer things because that only goes up to 32,000, which is about 32 seconds. We've been going for a lot longer than 32 seconds here. So this variable up here, I've created it, but it's not an int, it's an unsigned long. So long is a much bigger integer. It can hold numbers up to 2 billion. So great, and there's no such thing as negative time. So it's an unsigned one, no, no negative signs, just positive signs. So that is a, another type on that long, long list of types that I showed you. And you need to use that one because that's what that gives you. And if it, that's what it gives you, you better put it in a place that can hold that. Uh, so there, and steps three and four, exactly the same thing, except now I'm waiting for the train to get to the far side of the turnout. There's the, the block on the east side, if you will, or the yeah east side. And so I'm doing just another little wait. That's called a polling loop, which is not how you really do things, but it'll illustrate the concept here. And then record the time. And then do the math. Well, OK, so maybe you don't like math too much. But uh, what you do is you take the stop time minus the start time. That tells you how many thousands of seconds that you did. If you want hours out of it, well, you need how many thousandths of a second in a second and how many seconds in an hour. So you have to do a little bit of math. Now, the number of hours it took to cross that turnout is going to be some little tiny number like 0 0.0003472 seconds or something. It's not going to be an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Again, it's not going to be an integer. It's not going to be a long integer. It's, it's, it's a, something with a fraction. Oh, well, how do you get fractions? Well. It's another kind of data called a float. So look on that long list, you know, browse it, and you'll see the different kinds of things you can do. Uh, float is a number with a fraction, to seven decimal places. That's plenty. Uh, when you're calculating it, all the numbers have to be floats too, and that means you stick a dot zero. You need to put decimal points in here. If you don't put decimal points in there, all of these things will be some sort of integer, and it'll calculate it as some sort of integer and give you an integer answer. Well, 0 0.00337, whatever, it's not an integer. Uh, so the rule is, and it's not the real rule, but a good beginner's rule is, if you're doing anything that requires fractions, put 0, .0 put dot zero on everything. Just throw it everywhere, uh, and you won't have any problems. If you don't, you probably will have problems. And then the speed was so many miles an hour. And uh, the miles, well, I have to convert. This is N scale, so 160 for N scale, um, at least on this side of the pond anyway. And how many feet, you know, how many inches in a foot, and how many feet in a mile uh, to get miles. OK, and that'll give me a speedometer. And last but not least, uh, there is a bug here that I won't have time to show you, but it was my fault again. Uh, if you do this, it'll find the speed of the locomotive, go right back up to the top. And of course, the locomotive will still be in the turnout. So this, this thing won't wait. And the front wheels will still be in the east block. So it will be there too. And so this one won't wait. We'll get a start time of zero and a stop time that's identical, or start and stop will be identical. This will be zero. And we'll get infinity miles. You know, it, it just went through that turnout in zero time. Wow, fast locomotive. Uh, no. So we have to say, well, no, no, we have to wait for it to get out of here before we go and try and do it again. So I had to put that little thing in there. That's a subtle point. So uh, we've got that running. Let's see what it's doing. Let's go over to the 
serial monitor here and open it up and we've got a train coming faster for me than it looks like for you a little jerky motion there and it'll get there it's already there for me and there we go okay 24.57 miles an hour now let's make it go a little faster here and uh you know, that looks to me it's hard to see for you because it's jumping around all the time what's that going to be 46 miles an hour and i'll just let that run around a little bit this is a very very accurate speedometer i use this for speed matching locomotives um when it comes around again and i'm sorry the video isn't very good uh, it'll probably be very, very close to exactly the same value again, 46.61. Uh, it'll be within a very small fraction of a mile per hour, uh, identical all the time. This is a bit of a testament to how accurate the timing is if you do this. And also, of course, the feedback uh, in the locomotive. The, the uh, uh, decoder is doing a very good job of maintaining exactly whatever speed it's supposed to for speed step 29 here. Uh, that one was a little tiny bit less. So there's the, the four main concepts that you need for programming. Uh, this was a very, very quick introduction to what's probably normally about the first third of a semester course in programming. So uh, you're not going to have absorbed all the details. Uh, you have to do this. You have to practice this. You have to learn this if you're going to do it yourself. But hopefully uh, you weren't too scared off by the concepts. So let me just go to the uh, end over here. OK, just do a quick summary. So variables, you can store data. You can get it back in all sorts of different kinds of data. Blocks, sequences of actions with those little curly braces around them. If statements to give you a decision, do I do this or do I don't? And loops, a little while to say, well, just keep doing this. You know, the equivalent of are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Except I don't think your kids ask it a thousand times per second, which is what this is doing. Aren't you glad? <laughs> uh, and those are what you need to know for the very basics. You can probably do just about anything with your model railroad using only those four. Uh, you probably won't need much except for the you know vocabulary and digital read digital write and the the if um you can do a lot with that uh, in fact i've got a full-blown ctc system on this uh, little guy here why don't i just bring this out quickly to show you there's there's the world's smallest ctc panel right there and uh there's an arduino in there whoops and uh, I, I don't think that used much more than what you see uh, already. And so here's something. If you're interested in learning programming, let me give you a little pointer to how you might do it. There's a language called processing out there. And we use this at the university now to teach first year students because it's all about graphics and animation. It's a lot of fun to, to use. And it is a different language than what the Arduino uses. It's a variety of Java. Uh, that's the J in the JMRI that you may have heard of. Uh, whereas the Arduino uses a variety of C++. Neither one is exactly those two languages. But both are descendants of this C language that I mentioned. And they, the fundamentals of both, the if, the, the, the data, the int, and the, you know, the long, and, and the braces, and the while, and the if, they're, they're all the same. Uh, so it's very uh, much a thing that you can transport over once you've learned it. And in fact, it's very powerful to get processing and the Arduino to talk to each other. There are libraries on both ends that very easily allow you to send data back and forth between the two programming languages. And you can do some fancy things with that. So uh, I suggest that you know if you're interested in dipping your toe into some programming, go there. Go to that little uh, URL that's on the screen there. My colleague, Jim Young at the University of Manitoba wrote a great and free textbook in uh, programming that we use for our first year classes. Uh, it's, uh, it's very approachable and it'll teach you in far more detail than I could all of this stuff right there. And last but not least, if you try this and you get into trouble, I've been answering students' questions for more than 40 years. Uh, I'm going to answer a few more. So if you want to send me an email at that email address on the screen, 
more than happy to, you know, sort things out for you, help you in writing or debugging a program, uh, all in a day's work. So you can contact me there. Okay, I guess I will leave that up for the moment and uh, we don't have much time for questions, but uh, is there anything? Uh, we, just, we just ran out of time for questions, but it was a lot better seeing the speedometer than, um, than forcing the questions in here because you can still go onto Facebook and answer them for the people. Uh, okay, you can do that. the name of the language you're using? Sorry? First question was, what's the name of the language that you're typing in? Uh, it's sort of C++. It's the Arduino version of C++. If you, if you get a C++ uh, textbook or something, uh, the sort of the whole world program right at the very start, yeah, it won't work. Uh, okay. So it's, it's a different variety. So you would have to get an actual Arduino book uh, on how to program to get the exact language that the Arduino uses. Uh, it's a little bit specific. Are there any tips or methods for reducing the oversights or mistakes when you create programs? Uh, well, number one, think. Uh, <laughs> blame yourself and think. Uh, you, you have to think like a computer. You have to put yourself in its place and saying, okay, I'm, I'm just slavishly without any thought whatsoever doing these steps exactly as they're laid out here. What would happen if I did that? And put yourself in the place of the computer and see why it's doing what it's doing. The other thing you need to do is collect information, uh, get clues, put on your Sherlock Holmes hat and, and collect clues. And that print line, that serial dot print line thing, have it tell you what it's doing. OK, I'm turning this light on now. OK, I see the locomotive now. OK, I'm turning that light off now. And when it's telling you what it's doing, you can often spot, well, wait a minute, I didn't tell you to do that. Yes, you did. That's what it's doing. Uh, so get that sort of information. And then there's more powerful tools, but they take a while to use. Last question. Do you make your sketches available anywhere? Uh, I don't post them anywhere, but I, I'm quite happy to share them with people. If you email me at that email address, uh, you know, the, the speedometer one and so on. The trouble is that they tend to be rather specific to the um, you know, your layout, your system, where your sensors are connected to the audience. So uh, they're, uh, you have to customize them a bit. Okay. Well, John, thank you very, very much. You, uh, I think you had the crowd mesmerized. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you're going to get requests for, can I have your uh, speedometer sketch? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Be ready. Uh, well, it, uh, uh, I have a handout, which has been posted, I, I think. Uh, I've sent it off to Gordy anyway. I, I'm thinking it will be posted. It contains all of the uh, information that I just did and, and a bunch of text that is fairly detailed and these examples. And they're very, not very long. You can type them in. So you can go and get that. It'll be on Facebook. Thank you very, very much. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. They will, will post it.